Hello everybody and a very warm welcome back to Tony Northeastern and I hope you're all keeping safe and well. Um, people say that um, I have a lot of patience for doing what I'm doing but I think it's you guys who have a lot of patience for keeping up with me on this bill because now we're on to episode 16 and we're still working on the insides of these rooms uh, last week we did all the fiddly stuff telephones typewriters lamps and a radio this week we need to concentrate at least getting one of these buildings complete and uh, I want to start on whoops um, I think this one's gone missing yeah, it's over on the bench, just kidding. And it's this one, because there's only two rooms, and I think we should be able to finish this building off completely. Um, we've got the porter's room, and we've got the refreshments room. Now, the refreshments room's all, already got the counter, so it's just a question of making tables and chairs and putting some people inside. Um, the porter's room, well... Uh, the porter's room, we need some lockers in there, some chairs, a tel telephone, well we've got the telephone and some shelves for any um, lost property and that sort of thing. So, let's head over to the bench. What we're looking at now is the inside of the porter's come left luggage room. Um, as you can see, it's been decorated and it's fairly empty so we need to fill it up now there's quite a lot of porters um, um, dotted around Tyne Dock and um, so what we need to put in there is a set of lockers a desk a telephone and maybe a couple of chairs and a table um, and that's what we're, we're going to do and here we have the floors. Um, as you can see here, I've marked out for the fireplaces and it doesn't leave a lot of room for um, filling it up with furniture. So the first thing I want to start with is the lockers. Now, I have a small sketch and um, what I'm going to do, I'm going to put a four door locker in there for, for the staff because I don't think there's any more than four porters working at Tyne Dock. So that's what we've got. So the, these are, are the sizes and um, basically what I'm going to do first is draw out the front and that hence what this piece of card is. So I've marked 7mm from each edge and then what I'll do is I'll score a line and then fold it and at the same time I shall draw all the doors onto this and then I'll paint it up and then fill out the back with card to bring it up to 7mm so this is a millimetre already so if we cut three pieces of 2mm and just fill out the back and then just put uh, a piece of card on the top and then we shall have our lockers. So now we have the body of the lockers if you like and here we have our three packers to bring it up to um, seven millimeters. So we just need to glue all this lot together to form the lockers. Um, nice manageable size. No tweezers need here and we can 
glue this together without sticking our fingers together. Just gotta make sure I put the packers in the right way around. Like so. Make sure the flush top and bottom. Once all this lot has been stuck together, we need to st stick a thin piece of card to bring it off the wall um, to avoid the skirting that we've got around the room. You know what I mean? So this will then sit flush with the floor. Well, that was quite straightforward to do. A couple of bits of card uh, covered with another piece of card, and now we have some lockers. Um, if you look closely, I have put a piece of card on the back with a two mil gap on the bottom, and then that just sits over the uh, skirting board, and then that will bring it flush with the floor when the floor goes in so that'll be another gluing point to the floor so we can put some glue along that edge and then glue that floor in place so that's the lockers done the next item on the list is some shelves and uh, quite straightforward to make I've just cut three pieces, four pieces of card uh, for the width there that I need to, to go in between the chimney breast and the wall which is roughly 22 millimeters so this is 21 millimeters by 25 millimeters tall um, so what I'm about to do now is just put in these three pieces of card to form some shelves and uh, that's that little item done like I said quite straightforward to do the next item on the list is chairs these little guys. Uh, you've probably seen me make these before and it's all a question of folds. Um, so from the edge of the rule we go five millimeters, five millimeters and then seven millimeters. Um, slightly different to the chairs that are made for the Saracen's Head pub. Um, because they had their tops cut out and the uh, legs cut out and uh, I won't be doing that with these um, just for quickness so like I said it's a, a question of folds so we just set up the lines to the edge of the square and then fold it over remove it from the square and then pinch, pinch it so it's really tight and if it's 5 mil it should line up with the pencil line. That edge should line up with that pencil line. And then we fold it again, but this time I go back on myself. So I put the pencil line in the middle and then bend it over like so. And then squish it nice and tight so that the corners meet. As you can see there, the, the corners have met. And then for the next fold, which is on the 7mm line, uh, we fold it away from ourselves. But this time it comes all the way back to form the back of the chair. And it should be no more than 2mm of the original, original fold, like so. And then we open up the last fold that we've done and then add a little tiny bit of super glue because you want to fold and glue that back together. And then we just pinch the card and it should stick, making sure you can keep the card parallel. 
and then if we lift up this front legs we almost form a seat already like so that's a case of just measuring five, uh, four millimeters to the underside of that seat because it's five millimeters to the top and uh, don't forget to leave the pencil line on and then just cut that off then we have our chair some hours later I have managed to do all the chairs and tables for these two rooms plus a few spares there's some odd bits that were left over from Jarrah Road like I had one of these uh, booth chairs and that table was left over from the Jarrah Road build so I thought I'd sneak them in there and use those so the idea is along this wall here we have we will have three sets of tables one two three with 12 chairs and on this side here we'll have the two round tables with two chairs something like that so that's plenty for that room so that's how I'm going to lay out these two rooms so now I've got lots of painting to do well this is the last chance to see this as it is um, all the painted items are dried as you can see and they're all been stuck down onto the floor um, apart from the lockers and the, the shelves so that just shows you how small this little um, porter's office is come um, lost property uh, room as you can see he's got a telephone and his lamp on his desk and if we look on the shelves we have something in lost property it looks like someone has left their handbag somewhere so yeah these two items are not stuck down because I'm going to glue these to the walls um, so the only thing that I've got to be wary of and I have checked this that this chair does not clash with the wall I've had that before especially on Jarrah Road where I had a chair clash and I had to remove the chair but uh, and this was the chair now it's <laughs> and now it's in the refreshment room at Tying Dock Station so yeah, there you go so the scene as creek has been created and all we got to do is stick this into the building now the moment of truth will the floor fit and will there be any clashes so what I'm doing is just, just spreading some of the glue on the fireplaces anything where we can attach the floor so the bar will have some glue and there and also along the edges of the wall as well so I'll just make sure I cover all the edges make sure there's nothing no dry spots because we want to make sure that uh, when the floor goes in it goes in and it sticks first time so we'll just run a little bit along this edge A little bit along that edge. I do like this part of the build because I know once the floor is in, it's job done. Well, for this building anyway. Right, so. Make sure it covers all along the images. Make 
Make sure it doesn't run in down the wallpaper. Right, I think we're ready. I'll pick this floor up. And we'll just slot that in there. Make sure the edges go down. And it looks like we've got a fit. So I've just got to clean that up. And uh, see what it looks like. And it's all stuck down. Well, at last, uh, all I can say is we finally got one building that is fully complete inside with the decorating and all the little details and figures. And uh, it's taken a while just to get to this stage. And hopefully next week or next time we can do the same to uh, this building. So, let's have quick look around and see if we can see any of the details. I know there's no power to this building yet, but we might be able to see something. Right, let's start with the porter's room. Absolutely blacked out. We're not going to see anything in there, but if we move along to the refreshments room, because it's got so many windows, we can actually see some of the detail. We can see the the two railway workers at the table near the fireplace. Uh, we can see some of the um, passengers uh, in, in their seats and we can just about make out a little bit more through the other window. So yeah, just can't wait to get the lighting done. For this building. I bet the porters are now happy because they've got somewhere to go if they want a sneaky cup of tea. Got all the mod cons in there, haven't they? Right. I think that's all from me. Hope you've enjoyed what you've seen and I hope you've given you some ideas on on how to put detail into these rooms anyway thanks again for watching and we'll see you again soon bye for now bye